welcome. And before we begin our seminar, we'd like to remind you that we have simultaneous translation, Spanish into English. Ensure that you select the icon at the lower right corner. We start our seminar, we remind you that we have simultaneous translation, Spanish to English. To change your language, click on the icon in the lower right corner. Having mentioned that, we welcome you to the continuation of the webinar series for capacity building on CODIS topics of interest to the Latin American and Caribbean region. These seminars are organized by the Federal Sanitary and Zone Sanitary Regulation and Control Agency uh, in representation of Ecuador, representing Ecuador as Chair of Codex Coordinating Committee for Latin America and the Caribbean, CICELAC, and FAO Regional Office for Latin America and the Caribbean that come together under the project actions to support the implementation of uh, Codex for the RAM, which is financed by the Republic of Korea. The webinar series, which will run until 2025, aims to socialize and promote the application of Codex Elementarius standards for strengthening the food safety systems in countries. During the year 2022, we address the first two modules, guide and orientation for new participants and basic texts. This year, we return to module three, future challenges in food safety held in April. We continue today with module four, where we want to pause and listen to countries and what has their experience in the implementation of Codex, its benefits and challenges. For that, we have the honor of having four regional references, one from Jamaica, Cuba, Colombia, and Bolivia. My name is Maria de Los Angeles Gatica. I am the regional coordination of the ACT project in FAO, and I am accompanied by the moderator, Daniela Vivero, who's a professional from Agro Calidad, CC Select Secretariat. I pass the floor to Daniela to continue with the presentation of our panelists and today's topic. Thank you, Maria. Good morning to everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. I welcome all of you to this series of webinars, and we are delighted with everyone that is here, and we will wait for some more people to join us in this meeting, and because of the importance of Codex in the region. Before we continue to maintain the order of the webinar, I ask that you write your country name followed by your name, as is my case, Ecuador, Daniela Vivero, and we appreciate keeping your microphone silent during the presentations. Now we move on today's topic for this module. We have four experts who will tell us about the country's experience in the implementation of Codex. At the end of all of the participations, we'll have a Q&A period where you can, you can raise your hand and you will be given the floor in the same way. You can write your queries in the chat that we will be reading. We would like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded so that we can later share this material with you and with those that were not able to join us this morning. We will begin with the panelists and we would like to begin with Alison Richards from Jamaica to continue with presentations by Nancy Fernandez from Cuba, Blanca Cristina Alarte from Colombia, and Thania Hulayani from Bolivia. Alison will begin with more than 12 years experience. She holds a degree in botany and zoology from the University of West Indies. Allison has been food safety inspector at the Jamaica Bureau of Standards for the past eight years. Her primary responsibility is to oversee food manufacturing facilities. During this period of time, she has been a member of the Codex Secretariat and Contact Point in Jamaica and is the Jamaica Focal Point representative for FAO's Transgenic Food Platform. She spearheads annual Food Safety Day initiatives and in her department and serves the National Biosafety Committee. Her outstanding work in food safety has been commemorated by delivering the high achiever recognition in her department, maintaining the highest percentage of registrations with her portfolio for over 80 food manufacturing facilities. We will open the floor now for Alison Richards. Welcome.
Good morning, Daniela. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank you and the stakeholders for the invitation you have extended to Jamaica and giving us the opportunity to share with all of you what we have been working on in Codex and what we continue and hope to achieve in the years um, to come. I will be sharing my screen with you so um, you could see my presentation. Please indicate if you are seeing so I may comment. Sí, eh, podemos verla, Alison. Muchas gracias. We can see it, Alison. Thank you. Perfect. So as Daniela said before, my name is Alison Richards. I am a member of the Codex Contact Point in Jamaica. Um, just to give you a background of what our, our, how our contact point was developed, um, we're housed at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, and we serve both as the Codex Contact Point and the Secretariat of the National Codex Committee. Our National Codex Committee was officially launched in December 20, 2004, my apologies, and the National Codex Committee coordinates codex activities within Jamaica through the establishment of local subcommittees. The Bureau of Standards Jamaica is the codex contact, and our National Codex Committee meets bi-monthly, which is the last Wednesday of every other month of the year. Our mission um, in the NCC is to participate in the development and adoption and implementation of codex standards, and uh, to protect consumer health and promote fair trade practices while safeguarding Jamaica's interest. Our vision as the NCC is to become a regional leader in the development and utilization of Codex Elementary Standards for the protection of consumers' health and promotion of trade. Now, our National Codex Committee is made up of stakeholders from four separate um, government ministries. That is the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. The functions of our National, um, National Codex Committee are to formulate national responses to proposals and policies, to act as a consultative body to the government, to appoint technical subcommittees to facilitate national participation, to nominate delegates to represent Jamaica at Codex meetings, to provide guidance on technical matters to private sector, and to establish mechanisms to promote Jamaica's standards for adoption as international standards. As I said before, our National Codex Committee is made up of different stakeholders, and some of these stakeholders are from government agencies, from non-government organizations, such as our consumer um, affairs, our academia, from our universities, and from our private sector, local food manufacturers. Our active subcommittees is the Food Labeling Committee, our Methods of Analysis and Sampling, our Food Import and Export Inspection Certification Systems, Food Hygiene, Pesticide Residues, Food Additives, Contaminants, Nutrition and Foods for Special Dietary Uses, Residues of Veterinary Drugs, Fresh Fruits and Vegetables, Spices and Culinary Herbs, and General Principles. Our three, we have three committees now, which are, are work in progress, we would call them, where we have had persons who have limited offices and we are now working um, hard in getting these committees um, up and running. I do know that the Fish and Fishery Products um, Committee internationally is now um, inactive due to no current work. So, you know, um, our office in Jamaica usually just tends to keep an eye out on any activity that is concerning these committees. And as soon as we've received any correspondence of that nature, then we would get our committees re um, re-established and active. So let's talk about some of the recent activities that the, our Codex Office has um, engaged in. Um, we have participated with the tremendous help of ECO um, 
for attendance at these international meetings. We've attended the Food Hygiene um, International Session, which was in November of 2022. We also attended the CAC 45 in December of last year. And this year, we received funding for attending um, res um, residues of veterinary drugs in foods and our food import and export systems in May of 2023. Um, in World Food Safety Day 2023, um, I spearheaded that initiative. And of course, this year's theme was about food standards saving life, which was, I think, a perfect opportunity to increase consumer awareness on the importance of codex standards and how from codex these standards are trickled into our national legislations which at the bureau of standards which is um the agency tasked with with developing these food standards we have managed to use codex um standards as reference documents for developing our national standards so that was a very important time or an important opportunity rather for me to include the important work of Codex and communicating that to our stakeholders. Just in June, um, ECO also sponsored our attendance at CCMAS 42 and recently CCPR in June to July. Now, in terms of our current or upcoming activities, um, CCGP is an upcoming meeting in which Jamaica is interested in attending. Um, ECA has um, offered their usual support in us attending. And our plans in celebrating Codex 60 is actually a work in progress. Our approach to this year's celebration would be um, to increase consumer awareness. And that would take the form of us going into high schools and doing presentations. Um, I think the teenage group or high schooler group is a pretty impressionable group and having embedding the importance of food safety or food standards, it is a good place to start. And we have had um, two commitments so far um, when the school year reopens to have myself or Mr. Earl Stewart, my colleague in the Codex office to attend these sessions and to boost consumer awareness from that stage. We also have the CAC 46 coming up, and that is something that we're looking forward to with the support of ECO. And uh, that is pretty much what we have um, for upcoming activities as it relates to our Codex office. So what are some of the benefits that Jamaica have um, received from participating in Codex? Um, regional collaboration on important food safety matters. It is very important to Jamaica to be involved in from a regional point of view. And today is one of those instances where we have the opportunity to share with you, our regional stakeholders, what has been happening in our office and also just sharing ways in which we can improve on that collaboration. We have increased um, in technical capacity through engaging in technical discussions and the promotion of private and public stakeholder collaboration is always a benefit that we have um, seen over the years since 2004. And another benefit of Codex Participation for Jamaica is a fair say in standard development through our attendance at these international sessions, through our participation in electronic working groups, commenting on these the development of standards. Those have given Jamaica a seat at the table for standard development internationally and of course eventually trickling into our national legislations. What are some of the challenges we're facing? Um, currently human resources. Myself and my other colleague who sits in our office are full-time employees to the Bureau of Standards so we do have other duties um, outside of Codex. And as you can tell from Daniel's introduction earlier, I do sit on many other committees. So um, it is a bit challenging at times to keep up with the demand of Codex, which we all know is important and also very demanding as it relates to the numerous documentation to keep abreast with, um, maintaining communication, maintaining participation and active participation. There is also the challenge of a language barrier. Um, Jamaica being an English-speaking country, 
being a part of CC LAP, I do find that the ability and the ease of communication amongst um, ourselves in the CC LAP region is a bit lacking or wanting whenever it really matters. And so those are just two challenges that we're currently facing. And it is my hope that we'll be granted the opportunity to increase technical capacity through partnerships with other jurisdictions and training. This is something that Jamaica is open to, to um, you know, probably visiting other codex offices in the region, seeing how these offices operate, um, learning from them and exploring areas for or opportunities for improvement within our own office. We are also open to giving that opportunity to other codex offices that may deem us or deem our office something to emulate. Another opportunity that we've identified is a solution to reducing the language barriers, such as Spanish language training. If there are other countries who may have that resource available, we are more than willing to take up that offer and to move towards being more of an inclusive region on the language scope and to, of course, improving our working codex, as always. Um, that is basically it in a nutshell. I hope I was too quick or too long. And of course, you can always reach me at arichards at ncre.org.jm or codexjamaica at bhg.org.jm. And my contact number is there as well. Thank you for listening. Mm, thank you very much for your excellent presentation, Alison. Just to remind you, we are going to have a Q&A at the end of all the presentations today. So we would like to ask you to write them down and write them down on the chat. We will be um, um, picking them up, uh, accumulating them, and then we will, of course, set forth the presentations now. We will have the presentation by Dr. Hortensia Nandes, Nancy Fernandez. Dr. Hortensia Nancy Fernandez has a degree in chemistry, PhD in technical sciences. We uh, have uh, the presentations. Good morning to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now give a continuity. Uh, we will be presenting the strengthening of capacities on codex um, aspects. We will begin our presentation of Codex Elementarius in Cuba. We will be uh, passing the overhead. Can you hear me? As you wish, we can advance the um, presentation or you can do it yourself any way you prefer. All right, I will be advancing my own overhead if it's not too complicated for you. I would like to uh, set forth a brief presentation. Yes, please do. I will see how we're going to advance the overhead because we might not be able to pass them or advance them. I've, I think we have it, you have to share it. So it doesn't give me autonomy to advance the presentations or the overhead. Okay, thank you very much. So Dr. Hortensia Nancy Fernandez has a degree in chemistry. She's a PhD in technical sciences, graduated in 1979 from the Faculty of Technological Chemistry of the University of Bratislava in Czechoslovakia. She's a senior researcher since 1981. She has a diploma in public administration and lead auditor in quality management systems in Bureau of Veritas. She completed a postgraduate studies in business marketing auditing at the University of the Havana, postgraduate degree in pulp and paper technology in Bratislava and Bratislava Academy of Sciences and the Stockholm Pulp and Paper Institute. Dr. Nancy has an extensive experience in research in the field of pulp and paper technology and quality and safety management system and multiple scientific publications that reflect her 
significant work. She's currently the Director General of the National Bureau of Standardization and Focal Point of the Codex of Cuba, chairs its National Committee and the Delegation of Cuba to the Commissions of Codex Elementaria since 2002, and coordinates a group of experts for the national food control systems. She has coordinated the expert groups for the de development of standardization, metrology, quality and accreditation, food safety, and national regulatory authority policies and their legal documents published in 2020. She has been awarded distinctions for her merits and contributions to Cuban science. Now, please, Dr. Hortensia, please, the floor is yours. Please let me know if you can share your presentation. Very well, then. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, the floor is yours. Cuba is member of the Codex Elementaria since 1964. Uh, we have a great extension of years in this involvement. Uh, participates actively and it wants to adapt its fundamental role and to make it in such a way that every new participant in the National Committee has uh, the initial knowledge to know what are the um, main um, uh, leaders of the work that we have to do. From the beginning uh, of the, the national authorities, let's say 1964, they demonstrated a great interest in participating in the work of Codex with the leaders of veterinary medicine, currently the National Health Center for Animal Health, and other entities as the Laboratory of Bromatology and other areas. It has been systematic and grow and, and has had great growth. It has, as in other activities, it has been ascending. And this has allowed us throughout these years to create a commission group and from the outset we strengthened the word to carry out the standards on the different systems that are linked to food safety and it was developed in the most important points of cuba between 1985 and 1990 this is when we developed a new focus on food safety, the standardization, and Cuba created a sanitary standard system for food safety, although at the time there had not been the creation of committees. We were working because at the time we did not have a specific process of procedures to work in a more systematic manner. We, create, we consider that the uh, Cuba system was a very crucial point to begin uh, taking important steps towards the participation in codex. We worked with a proposal to, uh, to face the struggle that we had with the salmonella in food. It has been an enormous uh, creation and participation of the work group for the imports and exports of food and to register the group in the Ministry of Public Health. From the creation of Codex Elementarius, of course, these were all elements that at a certain time we created a baseline, which is fundamental for the work uh, that we carry out in Codex Elementarius. The creation um, of Cuba had an important participation from the Deport Department of Hygiene and to the uh, technical analysis of MinSex. Uh, management of quality. There were other activities. There were formal uh, participations in the Commission of Codex through the Agreement 890 through the Republic of Cuba that created the standardization of the office as the representation of Cuba in CCA. But in the year 2002, we created the regulation of the National Committee uh, for the Republic of Cuba, which created the consultation organization, which was inter-ministry and intersectorial. 
throughout the years, the organizations of the uh, estate, central administration organizations, and other competent authorities and other entities that are part of the participation that represent the academy and the food uh, chain and other uh, stakeholders. Uh, through the committee of Codex, we have been able to establish an active commission, uh, which is the most important aspect that we considered uh, fundamental to define. It's not another commission. It is a former organism. We see how important the Codex is an active commission, and it has an important and growing significance at the international level uh, in Codex Elementarios. It works systematically with a group of experts, uh, depending on the com competencies that are being dealt with uh, when talking about safety. And it is geared uh, or led by the Department of Coordination of Food Safety and the Coordination of uh, or organization that is led by the focal point of uh, Codex Alimentarius. Cuba has been present in all the meetings of Codex since uh, the year 2002, and it has participated systematically. It has been stable and ascending for the last 21 years. It has participating in Fresh Fruit Codex and uh, Fresh uh, Vegetables, the Committee of Inspection, the sampling. That is, it hasn't. Uh, it has a permanent participation in its and the Commission, but it has understood the importance of the different and relevant uh, projects in the countries and the Committee of Hygiene or Food Safety, the analysis and to be able to understand the criteria and the debate, technical debates that are being carried out by the different committees to strengthen the work that has been carried out, that we are able to adopt the standards with a um, most uh, important participation. We have also participated since 82 to 83 uh, in different organizations. At the moment, uh, right now, which is carried out systematically, as I said, is an active organization. It has participated with projects financed by the fiduciary fund of the COVID to perfect its work and to create a culture of food safety in the country. And the there was a, a it participated with these projects that we considered appropriate, uh, that could be improved and was improved, and we needed therefore a superior uh, participation. And with this, we created the organization of the state, uh, which is a, a support. There is a policy approved by the Council of Ministers in 2017 that is a law decree. There's a, there is an express um, involvement in the government of Cuba, which is also supported by a law decree 9 on food safety and defines the responsibilities of players in the food chain and other um, stakeholders and the functions of the national regulatory body um, because these fields are under a regulatory framework. And this entire process of willingness and um, documentation and standardization is a strength for uh, the uh, focal point. Without that uh, express political willingness and without the support and without that entire background history and systematic involvement of the codex, we it would not be possible to achieve. So we believe that these are platform or baselines that, so that the codex and its work in Cuba can provide the country a country um, a traceability that is proven today. All the standards of codex for food or any other food has to adopt to cube uh, to cuba's um, fundamental information it will have to be written in accordance with the forms of the standards of uh, cuba they have to go through a format and it has to be incorporated in accordance to procedures of these new uh, standards 
that are generated in uh, the codex that have certain characteristics. Although it is adopted, it has to go through the format of Cuba because it's based on science. It is approved under consensus and they have been adapted. And of course, they are linked to the OMC. They have to go through the Cuban um, process of adoption. There is a procedure uh, for Codex in Cuba. It has a procedural manual, which is under implementation. It has been one of the results of the, um, a, the objective is to gather only one document with everything related to Codex in Cuba. Define clearly what are the functions, responsibilities, and mandates that our uh, national committee has and what are the responsibilities of each party and the procedures of, of work. It is very important and it is an application instrument in use and consultation for all involved parties and stakeholders with the activities of Codex at the uh, national level. These, all the stakeholders in the Republic of Cuba, it was edited also as a project and it is currently in every single place in every area of the country, which indicates and clarifies which are the procedures, the scope, the functions, and the responsibilities of Codex. Therefore, it is a fundamental instrument, the internal structure of Codex in Cuba. As you have it on the screen, there is a chairperson, which is myself at this moment, and there's a, stru a structure here in lineals of um, how the work is carried out. There's a vice chairperson, there's a secretariat, and there are coordinators, uh, which is where we have our uh, focal points of, of Codex in Cuba. And it works, of course, with the chair people or of the um, network, uh, then official members, which are the representatives of the food chain and other stakeholders, the sanitary authorities, the academic area, research centers, uh, private area consumers and observers, which are NGOs. The National Committee of Codex in Cuba, of course, is the link that we have to work with Codex directly and the focal uh, point of Codex, which works directly in uh, line with the main organizations, which is uh, CESELAC. We also have two fields of development, which are very important, and these have to do with the uh, general affair uh, committees and the product uh, committees. We will not read them all, but we work with all of these areas. You can see the listing of the, um, uh, the labeling, for example, the uh, area of sampling, number 46, uh, number 47, the analysis, sensorial analysis, and this covers all of the areas that Codex has functioning in our structure. The focal point of Codex Cuba is the link between the Secretariat of Codex and FAO and the Republic of Cuba. As we said, it is a coordinating body and, and it exercises this function as a focal point. And it is linked with other standardization technical committees and national entities. The National uh, uh, Commission of in Cuba for Codex, it is an interinstitutional coordination that leads into establishing and validating national positions on different topics, whether there are Codex, um, it is led by a chairperson design at the headquarters, which is in SIDMA, and through a coordination body in the Secretariat and its Secretariat. The National Committee is um, set up by a representative of each of the following entities and members from the ministries that are involved in the food chain process, the Ministry of Science, Public Health, Agriculture, uh, Food Safety, the Ministry of the Interior, um, Foreign Affairs, Armed Forces, um, sugar, the sugar producers, the Ministry of Tourism, 
um, the Ministry of Transportation, uh, which has an important uh, ro um, um, uh, task, um, the General um, Customs and the National uh, Institute for Hygiene that has the register all the uh, different institutes of uh, science that are supported by projects, the uh, National Authority of um, national of national animal health, uh, agro industry health, uh, quality, uh, all the different uh, presidents of food and other stakeholders, uh, such as consumers, educators the provincials, um, organizations of hygiene and epidemiology, uh, the veterinarian, uh, veterinarian um, areas, other representatives of small um, businesses, and so on. This is a large committee. This is a committee that meets, meets periodically, and they set forth um, uh, organizations for the year, and they meet to um, advice uh, uh, these different documents. These documents has is a procedural um, uh, process, and there is um, area of the functionality of the different uh, formal aspects, the adaptation of all the documents, and it's linked to other domestic and international um, links uh, in the uh, food chain. Um, linked to the different uh, stakeholders. And as far as management of the National Committee, and it's, uh, we've already said, it's led by the standard uh, Standardization Office, the law decree um, of uh, food safety establishes, establishes which are the functions of standardization linked to these topics and to Codus Elementarius. We went from uh, political willingness uh, of the political decision to uh, making it a mandatory process. This facilitates the um, comprehension and definition that this is not a voluntary participation because it is a formal document that has very specific, uh, specific aspects of the willingness of the uh, um, uh, Cuban uh, Republic. This model that is established is uh, the focal point. It can function in other areas that without um, we put the information based on the needs uh, we create extraordinary meetings if necessary. Um, the idea is to propose, analyze, evaluate all the priorities of the country linked to the extinct, existing norms, um, the um, developments, the requirement of information, and everything that has to do with food safety uh, of the food chain. It also gathers, reviews all the pertinent aspects related to technology, economy, health, um, systems of control to develop different arguments and acceptance or not acceptance of proposals and all the works of Codex Selac uh, sets forth as uh, fundamental for the region and gives priority to the meetings, to the organization, to the directives uh, for Codex and the different uh, positions it holds of the country based on the documents tr that transit through the focal point of Cuba. We have an, a work mechanism for the approval of these standards, as we said before. Uh, sometimes it is the uh, technical committees, uh, standardization technical committees that are uh, technical uh, organizations that are co uh, composed of specialists of high um, um, development and professional background and experience. They represent the different sectors of the food chain on these topics and other topics. Once the uh, standards are approved, uh, practices, directives uh, that are adopted by the uh, Codex Commission and the national committees and the focal points of the different uh, chair uh, persons so that they can contribute to create the standardization uh, national program. The coordinators 
of these uh, national directives establish the different dispositions, regula regulations, and procedures for planning because these committees, as was said previously uh, in a very summarized matter, uh, transform these codes, these uh, good practice guidelines in documents that can be adopted in the country through the National Normalization Office. The National Commission of Codex also defines the um, position of the country uh, and that should be approved by consensus uh, based on the general guidelines for the country uh, as stated by our procedural. And it has to be approved, as I said, for these procedures. If there is no consensus, the uh, chairperson of the Standardization Committee will uh, consider two or more uh, discussed positions in order to set forth these positions and submit them to uh, the technical committee. The secretariat and the coordinators of the focal point will send the members the different uh, standpoints uh, for comments and to generate a proposal for the Codex of the Nation. The uh, delegates, um, official delegates that will represent Cuba in the International Codex meeting uh, will be a part of the National Codex um, Committee or any of the uh, technical committees or observ observ uh, observers. These, uh, the, these will have the knowledge, the capacity, and the authorities to issue um, their participation actively. And these will always be uh, representatives. These will be um, assigned uh, in consultation with the focal point, which always assesses the participation of the members and observers that participate in this activity um, on behalf of the nation. We are currently uh, developing a project which has allowed us to scale up through the National Committee at a very uh, important level, uh, which has been formalized and connected with all the different players in the society. This project for the strengthening of sustainable management of the National Codex Committee in Cuba has had a very important moment. I repeat, one of the most important um, achievements was the procedural manual for Codex in Cuba with the advice of uh, international experts participating uh, with countries like Argentina, which uh, helped uh, in the process strengthening the structure of focal point of Cuba, which has already been approved and functioning. Um, the approval of the logo that identifies Codex in Cuba. And for all these activities, we, can, we have carried out workshops meetings and uh, exchange with international advisors, uh, players and stakeholders in the food chain. So what's happening in the framework of this project? We have had uh, some results, which is uh, information strategy, education and communication in that which relates to food safety. This is a strategy that begins with a previous work that was already done in the year 2014 with the code uh, Cuba set forth some of its views. Um, and we have ready uh, to create a conciliation to set it forth with the National uh, Organization of Communications in Cuba, other stakeholders. We are working on the um, experts uh, on the topics of, of specialization. And we have foreseen um, uh, to design a codex uh, site uh, with information, interaction, so that the other uh, comments can be made by all the stakeholders, whether um, um, the citizens at large or in interactive or a technical organization, so we can have a more interactive relation with all the stakeholders. We have part of a page where Codex is um, illustrated. We're going to have only one uh, dedicated web page for Codex Elementaris in Cuba. We have uh, technical committees, 
uh, we have a list. These are the ones that are active. Um, name, uh, each one has a number based on their registration in the Cuban uh, system. They're all active and they're all working. There are considerable numbers, uh, even um, ar um, aroma uh, herbs, which was 132, um, which has also been included. The uh, work committee through national workshops. Uh, we uh, call on exchange uh, experiences, criteria, and other topics that are of great priority that are detected through the inspections carried out, situations that are set forth, topics of, of importance. Uh, we have carried out 14 uh, of these workshops and some of the topics that have taken uh, have been taken on. We have had different members. These are very highly assisted um, events. And the most recent one, um, Oh, the seventh national workshop on uh, uh, Codex Elementarius, the resistance of uh, antimicrobians, the uh, current situation in Cuba as uh, a focus on the current situation. We have also carried out uh, food safety policies, a challenge for the development of Cuba. The other workshop update on topics of Codex Directive for the Protection of Health uh, to raise the um, well-being of the nation and other uh, topics in how we have presented projects. We have um, analyzed them in a national committee with different criteria to improve it. And other topics that we have uh, carried out, the presentation of the project of the uh, procedural manual um, with the committee, the uh, practices um, on the management of allergens in uh, food allergens in management and a critical analysis of the circular economy and in the agro industry, which is one of the recent topics. And in the framework of the third international convention, of um, food safety in Cuba was carried out on uh, the um, national workshop on codex and it was presented to the national commission and the uh, procedures manual. There are other topics that you can see listed here. And lastly, we would like to conclude with information that Cuba has today approximately 512 um, uh, published uh, standards on food and products related in which 75% of the documents are codex in order to support food safety in the middle of a, of a framework of a great amount of participation. And we have adopted more than 75% of the codex alimentarius, which includes mainly hygiene, good practices, directives, uh, labeling, uh, special um, uh, milk products, uh, uh, and for our uh, economic reality has the highest amount of attention. This is a brief summary. And this is where we find ourselves with the codex alimentarius. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nancy, for the excellent explanation. And we'd like to congratulate Cuba for its outstanding work. I would like to remind you that at the end of this um, um, seminar, we will have a Q&A. So please do not disconnect. So now we have Blanca Cristina Olarte. She's from Colombia. She's a food engineer and environmental sanitary engineer from the Universidad de La Salle. She's she is currently in the course of a master's degree in the um, uh, of public um, economics and public policies at the Universidad del Rosario in the last 22 years. She has worked in professional uh, area in the Ministry of Health and Social Protection in food safety. During this time in the ministry, she has gained experience in the development of food safety regulations, food safety inspection, surveillance, control at the national level. Blanca Cristina is currently contact or focal point for Codex Elementarius and technical secretary of the National Committee of Codex Elementarius. She's the co 
coordinator of a codex subcommittee and food hygiene and con uh, focal point in the Ministry of Health and Social Protection, notification for technical regulations for the World Trade Organization, and has participated in trade negotiations such as the United States, the European Union, Mercosur, South Korea, amongst others. She is also coordinator of other subcommittees such as antimicrobial resistance species and participated in some of the subcommittees at the national level, such as the food import and export inspection and certification systems. Today, Blanca Cristina could not be present, but she did not want to stop accompanying us, so she kindly sent us a video with her presentation. We will listen to her presentation. Very well, I will share her presentation. Thank you. And please let me know if you can see it or hear it correctly. Can you see it? Now, now we can see it. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Good morning. And thank you for this invitation for this uh, remote virtual um, participation with the experiences and application of CODIC in the regional area. I will give you a presentation on the experiences of CODEX in Colombia. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be able to present the progress we have achieved in Colombia. Uh, from that standpoint, we begin from Codex Alimentarius, its objectives to harmonize the uh, food uh, standards and the participation of its application at the world level. And also to be the international referral on uh, matters related to quality and food safety, food quality and safety. As a baseline of this presentation, our objectives is to protect the health of consumers, to ensure uh, equanimous practices in trade when referring to food and to promote the coordination of all works on standards, um, practice codes and directives for quality and safety of food. You can see the chronology of Codex Alimentarius that begins its work in 1963 and in Colombia we begin its work since 1969. In addition, we uh, become a member of the sanitary and phytosanitary agreements and the technical um, trade obstacles for the World uh, uh, Trade Organization since 1994. In addition from this organization as the World a trade organization, we participate in regulatory uh, good practices in that which relates to technical obstacles. The Ministry of Health and Social Protection has a internal procedure for the generation and modification of administrative uh, measures, which includes the path for the uh, technical establishment of norms. This path begins with the standards and the analysis of all the topics that will be dealt with during the year, particularly with quality and food safety. Uh, it also creates the regulation in coordination with the Productive Areas Academy and all the interested uh, parties or stakeholders when talking about food safety, uh, food quality and food safety, always under the Ministry of Health and Social Protection to generate a national consultant, uh, consultancy and international cons consultations based on its observations. We carry out a response to all the observations uh, that could have been set forth. Once we uh, finalize the responses to the procedure, we have an administrative process. We assign a number 
uh, and the year in which this measure is generated, and it is signed by the minister and the different ministries that are linked to the topic, or in some cases signed by the um, president of the republic. In this, uh, which is the one responsible for all the decrees. Well, here you can see some uh, codex directives. They are approximately 76 directives at this moment in codex. We have uh, set forth some of the norms that are uh, linked to the national involvement uh, for codex. We have the principal directives for uh, systems uh, for food control and the directives for imports uh, control of food. These are very important for the resolution 1223 of year 2013, which is part of the control of goods and products in the case of food and drinks. This has as a baseline the uh, risk analysis and considers the control of food at the national level, which have an integration of the different authorities that are part of the control of uh, food products. We also have a committee of imports and exports of food. We have, for example, the principles for the inspection and certification for imports and exports of food and principle and directives for information and emergency situations related to food safety. And for this case, we have Decree 2478 of 2018 on imports and exports. And also we have a technical uh, document for all the emergency situations based on food um, uh, safety. Uh, we have uh, not always uh, norms, but we have technical documents that can be updated as uh, they are needed and as the situation accounts for. We also have directives on the preparation of foods that are complementary for newborns and uh, small children. And for this, we have the resolution 11488 of the year 1984, which is co uh, currently being updated and takes as a reference as a reference the codex um, and other uh, standards are complement and allow us to update this resolution. Today in codex, we also find standards that are based on other products, approximately 191 uh, norms or standards for products. We have Codex 1985, which has to do with pre-packaged um, uh, foods. Uh, and then there's the 192 of 1995, which is on uh, additives. And the 227, uh, at this moment, we are in the process of generating a project with all the old uh, information that we had in the uh, codex then. As I said, we have the general standard for uh, bottled uh, water, and we have a resolution 1285 um, of 1991. And at this moment, we are in the process of updating based uh, this document based on codex of 2027 for the maximum uh, limitations of residues of veterinarian products, Codex has approximately 610 limits and 75 uh, veterinarian medications or drugs. We have a resolution that is generated by the Ministry of Health and Social Protection, and we have the maximum limitations from uh, pesticides, approximately 4,847 limits for 294 different pesticides. And then uh, we have um, uh, homologized also uh, from the Ministry of Health and Social Protection. Now, as far as contaminants, we also have a resolution which is based on 105 maximum levels of uh, food contaminants for 18 contaminants. 
And for uh, food additives, as I, was, I mentioned, we have over 4,037 uh, levels of, 400, of four, 303 uh, food additives. We are currently in the regulatory process and we have as a referral the uh, codex norms as a reference, the limits of the United States, the European Union, and these countries that have a uh, standardizations based on risk analysis. At the, na at the national level, we have this compendium of national uh, norms, which is called normogram of uh, food. Uh, and, and it has, uh, it is under the law nine issued in 1979. And you can see we have a cross section. Um, we have it separated by products. We have a regulation on good practices, uh, manufacturing, and one uh, that has to do with quality. Uh, if you click on any of these different links, for example, in the case of foods and fat, um, oils and fats, you will see everything related to that topic. Uh, in this case, as I said, we have a standard for uh, meats, um, milk products, and all the different sectors that for us are essential when related to food safety. Maybe we don't have too many specifications in other topics uh, of low risk, because we center ourselves on the uh, risk analysis of which are the foods that we have to have regulated to exercise uh, the um, role of surveillance and control. Here we can see the uh, food system and uh, food safety and quality. We have here the intersectorial of measures of phytosanitary um, and so uh, sanitary, and we see the commission of quality, which we call CICAL. These uh, two commissions uh, is where you have everything related to the uh, food system for the intersectorial of a sanitary um, area. We have a technical secretariat, which is part of DNP, the National Department of Planning, and the departments that are related to COMPAS, which are some policies that are specific in our agro of food systems and uh, quality and safety. We also have the ENP, which works on the analysis of uh, standard impacts uh, for sanitary and phytosanitary aspects, which has to do with risk analysis. As we all know, all the codex standards have risk analysis, so it is much easier for us to have a, ju a technical justification at the moment that we set forth some sort of measure here. We also have a policy of uh, food, which is analyzed by the Ministry of Health um, and Public Safety, the Ministry of, um, of Transportation, the Ministry of the Environment and Sustainable Development, amongst others. Each one of these ministries, Ministry of Agriculture also, has their authorities of surveillance and control. In the case of the Ministry of health and social protection. It has EMA, um, which is the uh, surveillance of uh, foods. And we also have the um, national analysis, which carry out the certification and evaluation of the uh, different areas. We also have the, the Department of Health, which is a coordination, technical uh, coordination analysis office. We also have the Ministry of um, uh, analysis of agro industry. We have the superintendency of industry and commerce, which is part of the Ministry of uh, Trade and Tourism. And we also have IAM, which is the uh, surveillance and control for the environment. Here you can see the National Institute of Health because it is in this institute where we have the risk analysis, which supports some of the measures. And of course, 
it is a fundamental support at the moment of uh, risk of carrying out a risk analysis. Therefore, we have developed a great deal of projects that are supported with risk analysis and food safety with them. We also have the, Insti uh, the Research Institute, which also supports, in some cases, some research that are specific uh, that we might need to develop to provide support for the uh, quality and uh, food uh, safety. Uh, we also have Osavia, AgroSavia, which is another um, research organization and also supports uh, uh, trade and the Superintendency of Industry and Commerce. We have the National Institute of Metrology, which supports all these activities in the agro system and also in other systems. But in this case, it helps us enormously in nitrology in the uh, food chain. We also have the Econtech, which works uh, with a certification, accreditation, uh, assessment, and, com and conformity to the uh, quality of food. Uh, supported by ONAC, as I said before, has accreditation functions and certification functions for the uh, assessment and conformity of uh, these accreditation. It also supports the Codex Alimentaris, which is to protect health of Colombians and obviously the quality uh, directly uh, uh, is supported in the development of quality of each one of the industries of the trade of each one of these foods, and it supports the quality of food and safety of food. These, when it works well, when it works in a coordinated manner, it facilitates the inclusion of our products into the international markets, of course. And this also facilitates the trade of the of food products. It is very important to be active and participate in the formulation of Codex Alimentarius and to be very uh, updated with the uh, international and national uh, regulations, as I said it before, that will support the surveillance and control of food safety and quality. Uh, to conclude, uh, we would like to sh uh, illustrate the three different um, antimicrobial resistance do, uh, codes, the code of practices to reduce to the minimum the RAM transmitted uh, in foods, which was uh, uh, launched in 2005 and reviewed in 2021, directives for the risk analysis of RAM transmitted uh, by food, which was issued in 2011, reviewed 2021, and the directives for follow-up and surveillance integrated in RAM trans uh, for food. And these were these are documents that are uh, supported um, with this document for uh, aspects related to the resistance of antimicrobians. Uh, uh, in this um, image, you can see the uh, process that has gone through in these three uh, standards that I've just introduced to you. What we expect also is to have specific standards uh, for the maximum resistance of p uh, pesticides, veterinarian um, drugs, everything related to contaminates, uh, microbiology linked to products. Thanks to the work that has been carried out by the Codex Commission that has been developed during these years, Colombia has been able to progress in this uh, regulation. And now we can take on everything related to the uh, antimicrobial resistance. Um, and we have, uh, for example, the resolution 2064, which is on good practices of the year 2002, which has to do with uh, quality. We also have uh, specific regulations on milk products and meat products. And we also have aspects related to antimicrobial uh, resistance 
And we have been able to progress in this area in control and uh, surveillance, which has to do with uh, the antimicrobial. Thanks to this process, we have been able to carry out control in the entire food chain at the national uh, production level and also at the international uh, production level, which helps us enormously to control public health in that which relates to food uh, safety. And as we were looking at the different areas, it facilitates the opening uh, of our uh, products to the international markets. As I mentioned, it is fundamental to have these international um, referrals in order to achieve uh, compliance with the protection of health and facilitating trade at the international level. For example, to the antimicrobial resistance, there are certain directives uh, for microbiological uh, processes. And at this moment in time, it seems we're only missing one uh, standard and also in order to have the coverage of the entire legislative uh, body on this topic matter. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here and to participate in this talk. And I will be uh, expectant to be able to respond to any query you might have. Thank you and have a nice day. At a distance, we thank the presentation by uh, Maria Cristina. To continue our webinar, we will open the floor to our fourth panelist, the engineer Tanya Huyani. Give me one second, please. Tanya, by profession, is an industrial engineer from Universidad Mayor de San Andres with a master's degree in exports. She's a specialist in food safety management systems. She's a specialist in financial management administration, specialist in business logistics and supply chain management. She's also a global competitive leadership program leader, export advisory program on natural food, ingredients, cosmetics, and, and, and pharmaceuticals. She is a chairwoman of Bolivian Chamber of Exporters of Quinoa and Organic Products, Cabolki, delegate of the National Chamber of Exporters of Bolivia, Caneb, and the National Committee of Food Codex of Bolivia. She's the director of the Chamber of Exporters for La Paz Comics, and she's also the former coordinator of the Technical Committee for the Development of Codex Standard for Quinoa. She's a partner and administrative manager from Sindan Organic SRL, which is a Bolivian company leader in agricultural production, industrialization, and expert of royal quinoa from Bolivia. Tanya, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. Maria, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. I will begin. You can see my screen, right? Yes, we see it. Please do it in presentation mode. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation uh, of the series of webinars for capacity building for codex um, and topics of interest for Latin America and the Caribbean. I will show you our experience of the application of codex in Bolivia. The National uh, Committee of Codex in Bolivia was uh, created under the Supreme Decree 24645. It is a specialized interdisciplinary of permanent profile with the objective to protect consumers, ensure good practices, food trade, and promote the harmony of the food standards. Our mission is to analyze, debate, propose, harmonize, and promote 
standards and international directives set forth by Codex on food safety and quality to protect the health of consumers and ensure equanimous practices and trade. As a vision, we have the entity uh, to articulate, promote national policies for food safety, to dedicate and promote harmonization of standards by codex with the application in uh, the country. As values, we have ethics, research, equa equality, and trade. The institutions that work in Codex Elementarius in uh, Bolivia, these are all the entities uh, that are public and others that are private. I will mention the first five, which are part of the executive committee. First, the chairmanship uh, in Bolivia is held by the Ministry of Rural Development and Lands, the National Chamber for Industries, the Ministry of Productive Development and Plural Economy, and also the Bolivian Institute of Normalization or Standardization and Quality, and the National Exporters of Bolivia that I am a part of. And then there are other regulatory bodies and entities of cooperation. Basically, what I'm going to show you is the experience that we have undergone with the generation of the standard, codex standard for quinoa. In the year 2013, the United Nations assigned uh, 2013 as the International Year of Quinoa, given the importance of its ancestral, cultural, nutritional, and social economic aspects. It was recognized as a potential the product would have in the future in the field of food safety, production, and international trade. As you know, we have eight steps to be able to generate a standard. And I have set forth a chronology of how we began working on this from 2008 to 2015, when we began with the first stage uh, all the way to the uh, stage eight, uh, which ends in 2020, and I will set forth these stages. The first stages was the generation of a regional standard for quinoa. It was set forth and discussed in the framework of the Codex Committee meeting for Latin America and the Caribbean in 2000 and the meetings and coordination of countries of the region that were a part of the Codex Commission. This is an image of the meetings. I show you uh, uh, the uh, delegates of the office of ICA Bolivia, FAO, and all, uh, which was uh, led by uh, Madame Beatriz. And we also had uh, a meeting uh, with the regional uh, interested parties and stakeholders to set forth a proposal in that which relates to quinoa. So what were our strategic uh, objectives? What was our critical examination of this situation when uh, thinking of a standard for quinoa? We wanted to develop a rational standard framework that would establish characteristics, requirements, and that were essential for uh, quality and food safety to ensure nutrition for consumers and establish the guidelines for international trade of this product. Contribute to the sustainable uh, of, uh, availability of the resources and mechanisms for the uh, development of um, contribution to, ru to reducing rural po poverty and ensuring uh, food for producers. We also analyze the legislation and international trade. Bolivia is an important producer at a world level and also exporter, and organizations and private companies traded on the product, but there was no specific legislation referred to international trade. So we saw the potential. There were countries such as France, the United States, and Holland that led 
the uh, purchasing of the of quinoa and also open the doors to uh, areas such as Asia and other European countries in Latin America. This was analyzed by Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador, who are the main producers. So what possibilities for standardization were there? There were already some uh, roadmaps set forth by international organizations and uh, some intergovernmental institutions led by Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. There were already in 2007 the creation of Andean community uh, nations. We have the 0032 that was created for the grains and pseudo cereals, then 0038 Andean grains uh, uh, for the qualification and requirements. The first one was for definitions, and 0039 had to do with the requirements for quality, food safety, and uh, trade in the uh, Andean community of nations. Bolivia did not have any experience for, cre for the creation of codex standards. We do had not defined, for example, if we're going to generate a regional standard, an international standard. Uh, so in year 2014, with the support of CICELAC, we, there was an event organized under the title The Activities for Codex Elementarius, Its Procedures, and the generation of standards and its importance at the international level. There was also a meeting called Technical Meeting for Specialists for the generation of setting forth proposals for a regional codex standard for quinoa. At this kind of activity supported by CICILAC, we had almost 110 participants um, on topics uh, for Codex Bolivia and Andean country participation were absolutely uh, fundamental. I want to mention from Colombia, Javier Muñoz and Luz de Maria. From Ecuador, we had Miguel Eduardo Peralta. From Peru, we had Mirna Susunaga and Bolivia. We have those that were part of the technical committee. This was a starting point uh, for our uh, process and to define what type of standard was going to be written. So in 2015, the CAC 38, the standard had already been created. The Commission approved new work related to an international standard for quinoa, and it agreed to reactivate the serial committee so that it would work within the framework assigned to uh, finalize the standard uh, of the project. And it, that was four years as recommended by the committee. We created a work group led by Bolivia and co-chaired by the United States. And uh, the languages that we used was English and Spanish to generate the initial project. The commission also agreed to limit the work of the uh, serial committee in the generation of the standard for quinoa and to suspend its activity indefinitely once the standard was issued. The, we thanked the United States and uh, Bolivia for the work that was Im involved. There was a technical committee created, IBNORCA, which are the focal points, and uh, we created the uh, different um, stakeholders that would be exporting companies, producers, certifying companies, universities, research and entities, and we had a very positive feedback. So we registered the institutions um, that were participating, 10 uh, private exporting companies, six uh, government institutions, 11 associations in quinoa, laboratories and so on. Then we went into stages two and three where we had a chronogram and a work group, electronic work group for quinoa. 
we had uh, um, different observations, experiences, documents were set forth, um, the different uh, aspects uh, to generate the Codex Elementarius for Bolivia. We followed the different stages with the support of the United States and basically the different institutions that supported us in this process. We also assumed the uh, electronic uh, work group uh, with the support of the United States. We saw a great deal of training. They took us to be able to learn how to administrate the suggestions and the different support areas that were needed to uh, go into the different stages. This is a list of members of Codex that participated in the international standard, Australia, Thailand, Argentina, the Republic of Korea, Chile, Brazil, Poland, Senegal, Mexico, the European Union, Canada, Peru, Greece, Switzerland, Malaysia, amongst others. Uh, we received all the different opinions in the generation of this standard. As I said before, we had very little experience in how to write or create these standards. Here we have the list of observers of Codex um, in the generation of the standard. And to strengthen our capacities and competencies, we uh, set forth this project uh, uh, for strengthening uh, the Codex uh, in Bolivia, and it has. Uh, we've had different seminars, work set forth. We had a, a project on methods of analysis and sampling of uh, food, uh, with the participation of specialists from Uruguay. Sorry, Tanya, we cannot continue hearing you. It seems you lost your connection. Can you reconnect, please? This um, capacity building, as I was saying, it was uh, transversal and we've had different experiences basically in methods of analysis and sampling, uh, food sampling. Uh, we had a specialist from Uruguay, Laura Flores, who um, discussed this topic. We also analyzed a food contaminant by Maria Elena Aguilar from Costa Rica in the general principles on codex. We had the specialist Andre Luis Bispo. The uh, organization of these events were very successful in Bolivia. We had very little experience in the standards processes to in the generation of standards. And we had the participation of Codex Elementarius, the different meetings that we had to set forth and organize. There was also a symposium on food safety with the participation of the commission president, uh, Madame uh, Awilo Ocheng. We had our government participating, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the uh, chairperson of the commission of Codex Alimentarios, um, the specialist on quinoa, quinoa. We had the um, PAHO and the World Health Organization that uh, of Bolivia that were very fundamental in generating the competencies that were uh, relevant for the uh, generation of the standard for Codex Elementarius. We had a symposium on food safety. We had the participation of public, private, and uh, and uh, academia on behalf of the uh, f fundamental systems with the authorities of the plurinational state of Bolivia. The central axis of the meeting was led by Bolivia, the Codex of the Standard by Quinoa. We created a group, electronic um, work group. We sought out a support by the scientific community with the objective to overcome any obstacles of uh, trading uh, the grain and we also achieved the commitment of the government, the the authorities, to um, with our commitment and to set forth and advance and progress with this standard. Well, finally, we had the uh, meeting, CAC 40 in 2017. The commission um, adopted the standard for quinoa on uh, stage five. And it also considered the possibility of analyzing the maximum levels of lead and cadmium in the series established by the general standard. 
with the participation of the United States and Bolivia to um, continue in the generation of the following and pending stages. Then a CAC 41 in 2018, the commission agreed to adopt the approval uh, based on the dispositions that were set forth. And it also indicates that the project uh, of quinoa has gone into stage eight, with the exception of two pending areas. One is the size of the grain. Amongst the countries of the region, we had not coordinated and had not agreed to certain points. In that stage, the United States also participated and worked with the countries to generate a standard that would benefit the region. In 2019, there was a point approved which have to do with the content of humidity, but basically we had a point in the region that had to do with the size of the grain, and this was uh, to stage six to be reviewed again. The commission stated that the quinoa standard would be published with a note that would foresee the elaboration of the size of the grain. This was a point that we had not agreed to amongst the countries of Peru and Ecuador, but we would be able to reach a consensus and we would be working on them in future sessions. And the, the section on the size of the grain would be eliminated um, at the level and the regional level in the different countries. We reviewed the technical information, but finally, we did not reach a consensus. So in CAC 43-2020, the commission took on the correction of the document on that which relates to the size of the grain with the reserves or comments of uh, Bolivia and Cuba. And basically, that's where it concludes. The norm has been approved. And the committee also, um, CCLP, stopped indefinitely its activities. And that's the experience we've had with the standardization of quinoa. With this standard, as you can see here, it is adopted in 2019 with an amendment in 2020. You can see the international market and they know the characteristics and the requirements of food safety for the consumption of this grain. It is exported to different countries in the world and also the production has increased. This, the world has been benefited uh, in the application of this standard for international trade. It is a baseline that did not exist in the past. Um, I conclude there, and basically, the standard is used for trade of the quinoa grain. I, what else can I show you? Through this experience with uh, quinoa, Bolivia, the plurinational state, has created or accessed uh, trust uh, funds. We have set forth three main results. We established a legal framework that would update the functions of the National Codex Committee and the focal point with its functions, institutionalities, and their sustainability. The other result is we have established subcommittees and the focal point of codex have been strengthened. The third result is that all the stakeholders, government, private, academia, and other public areas have been trained in a continuous manner. We have established a strategic plan at the institutional level where we have been able to show the mission, the vision, and the values that I've already shown you. The strategic plan, which is institutional, is car carries out five in-person workshops in 2021, which seeks to uh, promote, and there's a great interest of people to participate. We've involved the representatives of the National Committee, the public, private, uh, uh, academia, and also these um, leaders of uh, consumers and stakeholders in that area. As I mentioned before, the Strategic Institutional Plan 
is aligned with the mandate of the CCA. It protects the consumer's health and it guarantees equanimous practices in uh, food trade. It contributes to sustainable development objective, the SDS. It participates in the economic social development plan in four of its 10 axes. It has a planning horizon for four years, 2022 to 2025, and establishes five strategic objectives through 30 indicators that are currently underway. We have a web page in Bolivia where we provide all the information, access to meetings of uh, interest in food safety, all the indications that we had. We did not have this previously in Bolivia. What else can I tell you that we are also working on different technical committees. Uh, we have a national committee for food hygiene in Bolivia in the last meeting in, in the meeting 53 of Codex on food um, security or hygiene. Bolivia presented proposals for uh, good practices for traditional markets. 14 countries, three international organizations supported the generation of this document, which is to create a culture of safety. Uh, we're working on this and we continue uh, to have and to receive support. In the Committee of uh, Food Safety or Hygiene, we have um, different members. They are aligned uh, with the different uh, projects and committees that have been set forth. This is the experience of, Boli of Bolivia. We have worked from the outset in 2015, from 2000, 2008 to 2015. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Tanya. And we um, we apologize for the mistake that there was on the presentation. To begin now with our Q&A uh, process, we would like to ask the three panelists that are here with us uh, today, Tanya, Nancy, uh, it's so that you can uh, turn on your cameras and also Alison, if you're still with us. Yeah, Alison is here. I don't see her. Let's wait for a minute. She's already with us. Escuché mi nombre. I heard my name, but it's not very clear. Yes, Alison, we're going to begin with the uh, Q&A period, please. Is there a question for me, Tanya? We're going to begin. Thank you very much for those that have written your questions in the chat. We're going to begin with those and then you can raise your hand and we will open the floor for you. There are some questions. The first one is going to be for the three panelists. We will um, gladly hear your, your answers. What challenges do you see in Codex after 60 years? Um, uh, so Jamaica's challenges, as I outlined in our presentation earlier, is primarily um, just the workload involved in Codex. Um, there's a lot of, you know, there is a demanding um, job description. And the human resources challenges that Jamaica's face, where we don't have a dedicated staff complement towards the work of codex that is that currently presents a challenge um another is the language barrier at times um i tend i do know that the ccLAC region has more countries spanish-speaking countries than um 
English language speaking countries, and that tends to be um, a challenge at times, especially when we are having face to face dialogue, CC lab meetings at international meetings where there may not be necessarily real time translation um, of these conversations. So, those are the ma two major challenges that we currently face our human resource challenge and our, the language barrier challenge. Thank you, Alison. Nancy or Tanya, would you like to answer? Well, hi, Cuba. Uh, domestically speaking, the codex work is highly technical with very high level of qualifications and to reach everyone it should reach. We consider we need more staff young stuff, above all, that has a willingness to become involved uh, with great awareness of what Codex means, not only collaborators, because we have a great deal. We need a young uh, staff or employees that become involved in these tasks, not only of the technical committee, which is the seed of this topic, but also all the other activities of the focal point and the different stakeholders. We have to increase culture also. There is an important aspect that although we have carried out the workshops and we have a strategy, uh, communication, education, sending messages with FAO, it is evident that there isn't enough management or understanding of what this important tool entails uh, in that which relates to food safety and quality. Above all, in the small uh, scale producers, those that are further away, that which also uh, from our standpoint do not all have the tools, the IT tools, the access to all the different means that are required. It is difficult for them to reach the workshop, sometimes have the um, enough tools. We need to have more uh, IT uh, means, something that is more directed to the different types of public that we have. We need to project ourselves internally to develop applications that may be chosen by the public at large, depending on their involvement, their sector, their culture, and also going for them from the more general messages to the most specific messages that will reach people and to achieve a higher participation level um, with the electronic uh, groups. Uh, the commission is working in a more virtual manner. It works with electronic uh, groups. And sometimes we don't achieve that all the people we need uh, to become fully involved in the work, which limits our opportunities. Externally, we believe that Cuba considers that we should also ensure that Codex takes on again the purposes uh, for which it was created, which was declarations based on science, which is the, one of the main pillars in its uh, procedural manual. Because in the current stages, the codex is uh, detached. Many areas of codex do not accept uh, the backup of science, and this creates uh, dichotomy with the work that uh, the countries are generating. We educate people on codex and we set forth of the commission and the organizations of codex is sometimes there's a loss of transparency that um, does not help in the process of codex and internally we have to work, but we also have to achieve at the external level that Codex takes on some of the topics from the Cuban standpoint is not on the right path. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, Tanya? Yes, in Bolivia, although we are in a process of uh, advancement, it is quite uh, complex uh, aspects of staff to have uh, young, new staff 
that are entering in different activities and to maintain their stability. Sometimes there's a great deal of rotation and oh, with uh, Codex Elementaris, it's difficult to keep our staff in the process. There are many people that uh, need to be trained in Bolivia. We need, we need to strengthen the capacities in Bolivia. We also need to have the uh, technical and scientific support. It is a weakness that we have. Basically, we do not have it established or in a planning or coordinated in all the entities, but we are working. There is a great deal of collaborators, certainly, but specializing people in all different topics in the different committees. Topics of uh, internal interest is very complex. It is an arduous task that we uh, need to develop. Thank you very much to our three panelists for responding to that first question. We have a question now for Cuba. What entity surveils and monitors food standards in Cuba? With what frequency? What is the mechanism and scope of the results of the surveillance carried out? The compliance in standards in Cuba depends on whether we're talking about what kind of standards. There are other organizations that the scope of their competencies participate in the surveillance of standards. This is uh, surveillance is a very strong word because it has to do with a regulating body. In Cuba, by law, they decreed, uh, decree eight, and the main inspection organization of Cuba is the National Office of Normalization. Therefore, we have a body of inspectors that has 170 uh, inspectors in all the provinces and an office within the office of standardization, which is dedicated to monitoring in a program that is uh, carried out on an annual basis on the compliance of the laws of Cuba. In addition, the surveillance, we also have another organization that is done on that which relates to mandatory specific standards. For example, the sanitary um, uh, surveils the standards that are mandatory, which is the food safety, and other directives of Cuba, which are mandated, which can affect the health of people at large. And also we have the hygiene. And of course, when uh, referring to animals, we have the authority, this nat national um, um, health of animals, which uh, surveils the mandatory areas that have to do with animal and that which relates to uh, the vegetable, we have the phytosanitary now in that which relates to its competencies. And then there is a report that is issued with a uh, quarterly frequency uh, set forth to the uh, Cuban uh, government. It has two chapters, one of nonconformity, which is a result um, which is set forth by the office and and compliance with the norms of food and the requirements that they have to comply with and another chapter that is filled in by the sanitary uh, organizations and that which relates to the impact that have uh, come as a result of the compliance of those standards there is a national debate that reaches the um, responsible parties and they have to set forth the different compliance aspects that have been set forth. Thank you very much. If you have any other questions on this topic, thank you, Nancy, for your answer. I am going to continue with the next question. One second, please. In general, we talk about food safety. 
But Codex is also centered around creating equanimous trade. How would you summarize the effect Codex has had on your trade in your nations? This question is for all three of you. I don't know, Tanya, would you like to begin? Yes, in fact, there is an impact when this kind of standard exists. In our case, uh, with our experience in quinoa, there was no specific regulation. There was no reference port for the uh, trade uh, of quinoa. But by establishing a standard, there are guidelines for equanimous trade. Uh, countries uh, have their specific uh, regulations that are specific to their countries. But right now, there is a baseline in addition that people know the product, the characteristics of the products in this case. And basically, in, some, in our processes, in the case of healthy products, this is very broad. And there is a great deal of analysis on food safety, how trade uh, should be carried out at a national and international level. Yes, there is an impact. Thank you, Tanya. Alison, would you like to respond to this question? Thank you. Um, the impact of trade, as we all know, um, thankfully to Codex, all countries do have a seat at the table. Um, I've seen in instances where it is through Codex standards, which it being the basis on which our national legislation should be formed, have helped in trade and it is just the that premise on which jamaica still works as hard as it does to maintain its presence to keep um, an active role in the promulgation of codex standards and having those standards um being a part of our national legislation um it is also important to note that for trading amongst ourselves in the CCLAC region that has been helpful in our participation. And it is just as, um, is it Tanias? Yes, as Tania mentioned just yeah. now, um, just continuing um, giving our countries a voice at the internet as developing nations as well. It is pretty important to, to have that say and to work together as a region to, to um, ensure that trading um, with our major interests or major crop or major food commodities do have access to that global market. Thank you, Alison, for your answer. Nancy, would you like to answer, please? In the question, all the exportable um, products have standards in Cuba, including food. And there isn't a single food that can be exported from Cuba if it does not comply with the sanitary regulations, which are subject, of course, of the work of the sanitary authorities. On the other hand, we have a experts committee on food safety as co national control uh, food um, surveillance and anything that has to do with this topic or other, any of the members or any of the authorities can go to the their offices as a coordinator of the national food system to take on a area that could have implications in the country, in the production, in the exports, or in health. And any matter that has to do with the activity, uh, the trade uh, activity. From that standpoint, the um, food that is exported is protected. And every year we conciliate with the Ministry of Foreign Trade, which is a member of that work group of the National um, Codex and um, uh, Trade. And we analyze the interests of the countries and we verify if the standards, if these are standards from Codex. And many times it's not enough. It's important to say 
that for from our standpoint, sometimes there's more than that because sometimes food have to comply with other regulations that are um, in force in the markets and are not necessarily a codex. Um, and this happens with Mercosur, with the South America. Sometimes it happens with the European Union, with some regulation that we can that are obstacles for trade because it comes from their experiences, their impact, and therefore we must refer to this. When we meet, we have to give it a broader vision in that which relates to food trade, including our analysis, which are the regulations in matters of requirement of the Andean markets where the Andean pro where the Cuban products are um, reaching. Thank you very much. We have so many questions and we would like to continue with this discussion, which becomes more and more interesting. Uh, notwithstanding that, we are limited in time. We're going to take on the last question and we will gather them and send them by email so that uh, you will have them all. So the last question is, after the 60 years, how can Codex continue being relevant in the future, whether for your country, the region, or at the global level? This question is for all three of you. So whoever would like to begin, please um, take the floor. The Codex, in our opinion, Adelante. Go ahead, go ahead, Nancy. In our opinion, for Codex to maintain itself as we need it, uh, Codex uh, Cuba considers that it must pay more attention to be an institution based on science. And it has to be attached to this principle and to be able to achieve not employ 50% of our debates discussing on the results of the science of codex, whether they are correct or not, where not a single country for many years could present any evidence of this. So we have to respect science in codex, respect the gigs and of the scientific or um, organisms that support it, and to, and to care for the transparency of codex, and to attach ourselves to the manual. Sometimes, uh, we have to uh, respond to certain things because some countries do not know uh, that some participating countries do not know and they require aspects that are uh, outside of the manual or against the manual. Therefore, I believe we believe that it's very important. Codex must create uh, continue building capacity. Its codex should understand that not all countries have access to training on these topics and that we could create more collaboration on a south-south basis where countries that are uh, standing better, that have more expert uh, work, could support countries with less possibilities because not everything could is uh, supported with 1% uh, so that someone can go to a meeting. We should create in Codex work mechanisms that are more uh, effective to uh, uh, continue building capacity in different countries. And we have to be, to be very careful with the mechanisms that are continue to be created, that, that they have the capacities in, in, in countries, for example, aspects of certifications on uh, trade, on remote certifications, and so on. It's important that countries have IT because the producers are not in the main capital cities, and then it becomes a problem for nations. Therefore, Codex has to be more and more inclusive. It has to take on the reality of all the countries that are food producers and that it uh, builds capacities, attach itself to the manuals, and to ensure that its members follow it, and it continues to be a relevant organization. These are the things that need to be taking place. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Allison, please. So um, Nancy beat me to what um, I had to say, and I fully endorse um, her, her points that she has made in terms of the inclusion, full 
and unrestricted inclusion of developing countries, giving us the opportunity to, to be standard players. Um, the consideration that not every country will have the access to resources as every other country, and to also um, invest in capacity building for all these um, developing countries such as ourselves. So that's basically what I would want to see for Codex in the next 60 years. Um, I must also take the opportunity to, to, um, to highlight or to commend Codex on the strides that it has made over the last 60 years. Granted, I was not a part of majority of these years, but having attending, um, attended international sessions for during Codex 60, and just the strides Codex has made, it is very commendable with the um, implementation of their new website, um, having um, technological access to their text and standards much easier than I remember it being when I just entered the work of Codex. So um, in agreement with what Nancy said, I do believe that Codex has come a long way and we look forward, I can say as well, I can say for all of us that we do look forward to the improvements that will come in the future and we totally embrace what is in store. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison. Tanya, would you like to add something else? Yes, basically. A great deal of food is produced for the world, and we must continue disseminating the information on on the production of food based on the directives of um, Codex. The, uh, the science base must be prevalent above all. That is the issue, that we should maintain the uh, scientific uh, baseline. Uh, Thank you very much to all three panelists. We're sorry that we ran out of time. We'd like to congratulate all of you for your enormous contribution uh, to food safety and quality. I would now like to leave my colleague uh, to conclude and close the seminar. Thank you for giving us some extra time. And for the panelists, it was an excellent debate. We will have a longer um, um, moment to be able to have more fruitful discussions. Please uh, turn on your camera so we can take a picture of this event. Angeles, just uh, take a moment. Just turn on your cameras for a little moment because it's uh, four screenshot full of images. We are ready for the picture taking. We'll take the first pictures. Start smiling, please. There goes the first one. The second one. Uh, the second one now. Okay, and the third one. We're done. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much, Angeles. And we remind you and extend the participation to continue participating in our webinars. Our next date is the 26th of October, which is module five of food safety uh, under the focus of One Health. We have uh, sent uh, the information and please uh, connect to our social networks. It will be, sh it will be shared on file web pages and select and the re uh, the recording of these seminars and others can be found on the web page uh, that we have written on the chat we will see you in october thank you very much for your attention thank you all goodbye <laughs>